I want to just maybe explain a little bit about why I'm doing what I'm doing and why, where we're going with it, okay? So, the topic as we learned last week over the next few weeks is moving God from your head to your heart. And if you think about what Pastor Dave just said when he did his devotional, if you think about the person that God was talking to, my guess is that that person had God in their head, not in their heart. Because you see, when we only carry God in our head and not our heart, it gets all jumbled up with all the other stuff that's in our head today. All the things we got to remember to do, all the places we got to go. We got to call this person, we got to talk to that person, we got to, you know, we got to wash the floor, we got to cook dinner, and, and we're trying to figure all of that stuff out. And it's like throwing God into the blender that is our brain. And he just gets swirled around and we lose him. So that's why I think it's so important and I decided to do this is we need God in our heart. If, and, and I believe that if we're truly going to find salvation as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, that comes from our heart, not our head. There are things, yes, we need to understand about God with our head to our best of our ability. But when we worship God and we want to have a relationship with Him, that's got to be heart. Okay? So, so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing over the next few weeks anyway. So, my clicker is not working. So I'm going to have to... And we talked about head thinking versus... By the way, I asked you, left you with a question last week. How many of you are head thinkers? Put your hand up. Come on, how many of you think of your head? How many of you are heart thinkers? Okay, all right. I just wonder. Okay. All right. Uh, sorry, I'm skipping something, so my wife and I are trying to work this out. She's, she's far better than I am. Okay, so I'm going to start with an easy question and one that both of my daughters asked me when they were little. And I love this question. I don't have a great answer for it, but I love it, okay? And, and I think part of what we need to do is if we're going to have a personal relationship with God, then I think we really, really need to have some idea of who this is, okay? Who is God? And I think that we don't enter into a relationship or a friendship or whatever, and, and we're... We do that as we learn who the person is and whether we have similar likes and dislikes and things like that. And I think that we need to, with God, I think we need to understand a little bit, as much as we can, because God is, is pretty big for us to understand. But I think as much as we can, we need to try to understand who our God is. So I thought I'd start off with this, which is, what does God look like? And so... Hey, imagine this for a second. You're sitting in Tim Hortons or you're sitting in McDonald's, okay? And God walks in and sits down. Would you recognize him? Think about it. Would you recognize this guy? Got, person came in the door, sat down, ordered a burger and fries and a milkshake. Would you know it was God? No. Probably not. Certainly not by the way he looks. Because you remember, when God chose to come to earth before, he kind of fit right in. He chose to come and be, you know, to, to be born of Virgin Mary and, and his mom, Mary, and his father, Joseph, grew up like any other kid, so to speak, you know. And it wasn't until he started actually teaching... Okay, God, I'm good. Um, until he actually started teaching, that people came to realize there was something different about this person. Okay? And even then, if you think about how we treated him, how he was treated, the fact that he was mocked, he was spit upon, he was crucified, um, degraded, and... That was even when, when, when we knew who he was. 
And I think one, as I said, one of the, the big questions that kids love to ask, and, and my daughters did as well, is that they said, would say, Dad, what does God look like? So I'm going to try and... So the typical picture of God, he's very old. He has wrinkles. You're going to see how close this fits the table. Okay. He has a long white beard, which he could have. He has bushy white hair. Okay. All right. All right. Forget about Dave. <laughs> he has a long flowing robe, white, usually a white robe. He wears sandals, just like me. He has big bushy eyebrows. I can never understand that one, why anybody would want big bushy eyebrows. But he's usually quite large, and he's usually quite muscular. And if you look at this picture, and I'm sorry if you can't see it, this is... Michelangelo's, part of Michelangelo's painting from the Sistine Chapel. And this particular section here is called the creation of Adam. And this is God here. I don't know how well you can see him, especially from the back, okay? But it was the only picture I could find. But you can see, he's a pretty well-built guy, and he's got long <coughs> hair, and he's got a bushy beard, and all that kind of stuff. Oop, he's turned himself here. And that's generally what we see him as. Genesis, the first chapter in the Bible, Genesis 1.27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And, and God has appeared on earth more than just in the New Testament. And, um, for example, again in Genesis, he appears to Jacob. And it says, so Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, it is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. Later on in the Bible, Moses encounters God. Um, he encounters God as a burning bush. And, he, and it says in Exodus, but you cannot see my face, and that's important, for no one may see me and live. So he says to Moses, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. In actual fact, God appears in the Old Testament eight different times. He comes three times as a... Sorry, three. Oh. No, Old Testament. He appears in the Old Testament three times. As a man, once as a burning bush, and four times as the angel of the Lord. He also appears, if you read Numbers, he also appears as a pillar of cloud and as a pillar of fire. In the New Testament... In the New Testament. I love you. I'm trying to do better this week than last week. I guess it was a long ride back to home. It was very quiet, though. See, they remember. I know. I know. They've all reported it. In the New Testament. Very last week. God does reveal himself in the form of man, his incarnate son, Jesus Christ. Uh, and Christ is what we would call the uh, visible image of God. And in fact, Colossians says, the son is the image of the invisible God, then firstborn over all creation. You know what? The bottom line is we really don't know what God looks like. All right? We really don't. Um, what we do know is that he has the ability and the power to appear to us when he wants and in whatever form he would like to. All right. Um, we also know that one day we will know what God looks like because we will meet him face to face. In Matthew it says, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. And again in Revelations, no longer will be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, 
and his servants will worship him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. So, while we can't see God in the sense of recognizing him physically, all right, we can, there is a way that I believe that if God walked into McDonald's or Timmy's that you would know he was God. And that would be by his nature. Or some people might call it his personality or his character, or his spirit. I think if God walked in, if you are a true believing Christian, I think you would pick up on that pretty, pretty quickly that there was just something really different about this person. I really do. I think, I think we, are, we are, I don't want to use the word programmed. We're, we're, I think that's where the heart comes in. We would recognize God because of what's in our heart, and our heart would connect with Him. So, while we can't see God, I believe we would recognize Him. And I think instead of His physical image, I guess I would term it, for want of a better word, His spiritual image. That's what would connect. And when when the Bible says we are created in God's image, and I want you to think about this, it doesn't necessarily mean that God looks like us. Okay? That's not what it means. And in my case, that's probably a really good thing to talk. Okay? But I think what it means is when we are created in His image, we are created in His spiritual image. You get the difference? And we're going to talk a little bit about, in a minute, about who is God, and then I think you'll see, because I think God created us as kindred spirits to His. So, who is God? Did anybody come up with a really good answer for that? I left that with you last week, too. My dad is a Creator of the universe? Yes. Yes. Anything else? My daddy in heaven. Sorry? My daddy in heaven. Your daddy in heaven? That's a good one. Yeah, I like that. Savior and Lord. Sorry? Savior and Lord. Our Savior and Lord? Yeah, God is everything. God is everything? Yeah. At the back? Spiritual leader? Yeah. All of those things apply to God. Okay? Because that's how big God is. But one of the things that I think we need to understand in looking at how big God is, okay, is that God has always been here. Alright? Sometimes we get it in our head that, that God sort of showed up the same time as He created the earth. The truth is, God existed long before that. And, and I'll, give you an, I'll give you how I... I sort of, this is the best way I can explain this to you. Um, my, my son, when he was little, used to love to make up a new game or world to play in. And he would invite us to play in it. I always got the rules wrong. And he would sort of set the boundaries for that world or that game. Okay? But he didn't necessarily always want to play in that game. Do you follow what I'm saying? And that's a little, little bit, God was there. God was everywhere. God is e eternal and infinite. Okay? And he comes from a different place than our world. So when we have trouble understanding God, that's pretty logical that we don't. Because he, he exists differently than we do. But what God chose when he created our world, earth and us and all the creatures and everything else, is he chose to stay involved in it. Unlike my son, who if I was you know, winning the game, he would leave. <laughs> Such a little wimp. So God chose 
to stay involved in it with us and wants to be a part of it. All right? But the fact we don't understand him, I think, is, is not really very surprising at all. Okay? Because he's just, he's, he's so much bigger than all of us. Um, and unfortunately, maybe, for us, our God is invisible. And sometimes that makes it really hard for us because, you know what, we're human beings. We like to see things to believe them. We like to touch them. We like to, to feel them, to, to really believe them. Um, and a lot of other religions have gods that you can do that with. And they got, you know, all kinds of things. So what we have to do instead is we have to have faith because we can't see our God. So we have to have faith, true faith, that our God exists. And you gave me some, and, and that's what we, we need to have something that we can, I call it, hang in your hat on. It. Something that makes sense with us. And God, you've given some great definitions of, what you, of who you think God is. I've also heard him called the life force that drives the world. Um... He's a spirit. And there are those that unfortunately think that he's somebody that's totally made up to control people through religion. Uh, but we know that's not true. Okay? So let's look at how we know God. When we think of other people and we, we describe who they are, we tend to say things not so much about their appearance, but about who they are. So we might say, for example, he's mean, or he's really loving, or he's funny, or she's shy, um, or she's nasty. Notice I wasn't looking over there. <laughs> so what we do is we describe the person, we describe their personality. So what do we mean by that? This is something inside each one of us that does our thinking. Things like where to go, how to, what to eat, what to say, how to treat other people, uh, who we are. That's the part of us which is our personality and our spirit. Okay? And our spirit, which is in here, is the essence of who we are as a person. And the spirit that we have... And I, and I want to put this forward to you. The spirit that we have is not something that could have ever evolved through nature. It is something which has been given to us because there is not any natural process anywhere that creates a spirit in a person. There is nothing that nature does that creates a spirit. Okay? So, we're all walking around with this spirit or personality or whatever. And I think that the bottom line is that we got it from somewhere other than nature. And as the Bible said, we are created in God's image. And as I said earlier, not his physical image, but his spiritual image. So our spirit comes from God. Because only a thinking, feeling being could have created others who think and feel and have emotion. Okay? And that's our connection to our God. We are made in His image, His spirit, and His personality. And it's that peace that we connect with. And we don't do that through our head, we do that through our heart. And that's how we have a relationship with Him. Okay. So, who is our God? What is He like? Our God is kind, He's forgiving, He's righteous, He's merciful. He's just. He's knowable. We can know our God. He is welcoming to us no matter what we have done. 
He is creative. He created this world. He created, I mean, take a look around at some of the animals he created. The duck-billed platypus? How about, the, how about the giraffe? Like, why would you create an animal that has a neck like a, like a five-story building? That's pretty creative. Our God is honest. And our God is capable. But our God is also complex. It's very difficult at times for us to understand. Our God, I think most importantly, is a personal God. He is there for each one of us. He created us. He loves us. He wants us to know Him. He wants us, as His children, to know joy and happiness. He wants to care for us. And He wants a personal relationship with every one of us. Every one of us here. He is the epitome of life, love, grace, mercy, and all creation. That is the God that you choose to have a relationship with. And, you're going, and if you're going to have a relationship with that God, I sincerely hope and pray for each one of you that that relationship comes from here. Not just over here. From here. Not from here. That doesn't mean you don't use this because you need this to read the Bible, read His Word, and all of those things. But when it comes to, and remember we talked about something called that peace that passes all understanding? That comes from here. You can't get that from here. You can try, and you'll still be trying on the day you die. But if you start having your faith here, and believing in God here, and talking to God from here, then you are headed for salvation, and you are headed for an incredibly amazing personal relationship with our Lord. And you know what? There is nothing on this earth that is better than that. Okay. Next week we're going to talk about what does our, if we're going to have this relationship with God, what does He expect from us? Because you know what? He does expect some things from us. <laughs> and there are some things that we need, we need to, to talk about about what does God expect from us in order for Him to allow us inside His world into His personal space. And then the last week that I do, we're going to talk about some ways in which we can make those things happen that God wants us to do. Okay? So I'm going to leave you today with two questions. But before I do... I would like to thank my lovely wife. Isn't she special? Isn't she special? Yeah. What a lucky guy. Sorry? We had a conversation in the car on the way here. So I want to leave you with two questions for discussion today. Ba-da. And hopefully we've given you some information that you can maybe have a go at this one. How do we know God exists? And that's, that's a big question that Christians get asked all the time. I know I do. All right. Well, yeah, okay, that's all right. You believe in God. How do you know he's even there? You can't see him, can't touch him. You know what? Give me a break. So how do we know God, or how do you know God exists? Not us. You. Because we're trying to get down to the personal here. And the second question do you want a personal relationship with God? If you do, 
Why do you want a personal relationship with God? You got to make sure that you want it and you know why you want it. Because God doesn't do things halfway. If you're going to commit to a personal relationship with Him, He expects you to be all in. No holdbacks. Okay? As Dave likes to say, you can't stand with your toe in the shallow end. You got to walk down the other end and jump in the deep end when you want a relationship with God. That's what He wants. Okay? okay? So we're going to let you talk about this for the next few minutes. And thank you.